Hey guys, Justin here from 420 Consulting with the 420 Podcast. We are sitting here with Caitlin from Prism Equipment. If you haven't heard of Prism Equipment, where have you been? <laughs> really. Thank right? you for the intro. That was fantastic. Yeah. I appreciate that. Where have you been? Right? <laughs> I mean, it literally is the gold standard of tables. Uh, I mean, I'm a huge fan. Uh, we know lots of the same other people from the old Nelson, yeah. Nelson days, Mark and Roy are two really dear friends of mine, yeah. guys that I met through with BC Craft. Yeah, and, totally. Um, from I, the BC Craft debacle, I like to call it, right? It's like probably a good word for it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I mean, it's, that's what it was, right? And, yeah. and Matt's doing his best to kind of bring it back out now. Yeah. Um, but uh, the thing I took away from that debacle was mm-hmm. the relationships I made. I never would have got to meet Mark and Rory. I never would have got to meet, you know, uh, Big Braun from Kelowna. Oh, or, yeah, totally. You know, like the, those people, I just never would have met them, yeah, right? Totally. And they're some of the best people in this industry. And that was the one really cool, like even Janine and, you know, like, yeah, totally. like, yeah. Julia like, and all those yeah, guys. Well, like, yeah, Julia worked yeah. with 420. Oh, yeah, okay, so. I so Julia was, that. Julia yeah. was like one of the OG 420s. That's hilarious. Funny Julia story, okay. Please, so, go, go, yeah. <laughs> okay, funny Julia story, she'll just love me telling this one <laughs> in public. Um, so when I first started 420, I was actually like working, uh, I was working a regular full-time job. It was just before, just after the ACMPRs got brought back. Yeah. So everybody had been starving for months. I had to go get a real job. That's how bad it was. Oh, it's brutal. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I had to go get, I was working on a piece, a lovely job, thrilling job, something I really enjoyed doing. So I, it was a, another, just a really great time in my life, but... I was working a real job, like seven to four every day, right? Like none of us in this industry actually. No, no, I, I, I don't mind working five a.m. to five p.m., but I don't really, I'm not really super down with like nine to five and it for somebody else. Yeah, right? you know 100%. what I mean, right? No, I know that. <laughs> so I, I put an ad. I had no money. I had barely any money. I had just gotten the office at Show Point, so I had barely like I was like, oh god. And so I put an ad in on Craigslist looking for a web developer. That's okay, hilarious. because I had a web, de- I have a web development yeah. company as well. Please, was she the first applicant that you? She got? was the only applicant I hired. I, 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 you I, lucky son of a gun! I met her. I met her at, and she she was a freelance website designer. Okay. So I met her at a coffee shop in Royal Oak, just down the road from where we live. And I said, I was like, I was like, look, here's how it is. Yeah. I can only afford to pay you seventeen dollars an hour. And this is like 2016, I want to say. But you can use my office. You can work. I only need you to work like you know 20 hours a week or whatever. You can work. You know, you can do your own stuff out of the office. I don't even care. I just need somebody like you to help. My, my sister was not super tech savvy, and yeah. and so we needed that support for her. You we need two. it. Like, oh my gosh, I have. Well, I got a really good team behind me now, but. I don't know how we did it before. Like yeah. you have to have. You yeah. have to. If They're you don't have tech savvy people, you need them, right? Yeah. So, so anyway, so I begged her. I was like, please, I know this is ridiculous. I know I'm like, I know you're worth way more than that. Just take a chance. <laughs> I'm like, take a chance on me, you know, and uh, and I'm and I promise you, we'll you know, we'll do well, right? For, fortunately for me, she did take that chance, yeah. and then. Uh, you know, look where she's gotten in the industry now. I oh, mean, she's, totally. she's certainly one of the leading. She's a know, rock star. Yeah, yeah, she's unreal. So you got super lucky there. Yeah, I got super lucky. Look, I got <laughs> yeah. Sam. She's un- unbelievable. We got, uh, like, I've just been really lucky with hiring uh, for the most part. Mm-hmm. They have had a couple of horror stories. I'm yeah. sure oh, we all we have. Do, don't we? <laughs> oh, well, no, I'll tell you one horror story. The, the, so we have Mac that works with us now. So anybody that calls in, calls yeah. in is like, Mac is like, um, is in Julia's role with 420 now. So okay. she plays the same sort of role that Julia w- was when she was here with us full time. Julia's back here working some, some hours now with us. That, okay, I heard she yeah. was back a little bit. And yeah. like now coming out to Vic and I don't get out here very often. And yeah. I was like, I need a couple more hours in the day, but like I really want to meet up and just be like, let's just go yeah. get a drink and like shoot the shit. Yeah, should we, I think she'll be down here tomorrow. Oh, you should pop maybe down. I should backtrack. I gotta go back uh, to our oh, yeah, that's cool right, project that's going right. on yeah, in Duncan. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I snuck in there, so. Yeah, we'll yeah. <laughs> yeah, the cool project going on in Duncan is the one that uh, kind of what Mark got you to reach out to me for, really, Yeah, right? well, it was yeah. hilarious. Like, the fact that, I guess, you kind of found out about that on the Thursday. Yeah. I get a call on Friday about, yeah. And things don't usually move that fast, really, yeah. right? Like, like these, these guys are moving. Like, I've, yeah. been, I've done a bunch of these microplex deals. The vast majority of them kind of stall out, and so yeah. for our viewers that don't know, I can I feel pretty confident that I can talk about the project in general terms. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it in yeah, details. Yeah, well, we'll be very general. I'll be very yeah, general. We'll be very the project general. is like a 15 <laughs> unit microplex with a built-in processor yeah. and an on-site retail location yeah. on on the yeah. island 
right? Yeah. And super stoked. <laughs> it's going to be a really good setup yeah. for for the growers and for the and mm -hmm. you know like they'll have a guaranteed buyer for their product. They'll have a yeah. fast pathway to market. And and you and I, as we were talking it's about crucial. before, like, they is, need that right now. Yeah. And like and then farm beat sale rolling out for those micro guys too. Like to have all of that talent under one roof. Like that's there's some talent on this island. I mean, Unreal. there's some talent. I think that every region in BC has a pretty sick talent. It's unique, though. It's unique to the region. Like, yeah. and you and I both have like a huge love for for Nelson, oh, and big, big time. especially for me, you know, Prism Equipment when we started it, and I rolled up with the tables and stuff. Like, the Kootenays was really the area that like those guys just supported me like crazy, and it's awesome. And like, you go down there, and as much as I love living in Salmon Arm, and yeah. I have a great life there, like. The restaurant game in Nelson oh, is out of control, oh, and I'm shit. such a foodie. Yeah. Like I would live at Pitchfork. Okay, Pitchfork. Live pitch, there. Pitchfork should go to there. Oh, that's your, if you had, if you could only eat one at one restaurant in Nelson, I mean, oh, and, that's that's tough because like you got Marzano's, you got like Broken Hill. No, Pitchfork all day long. What yeah. about the all seasons? You like that? It's kind of gone downhill, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I I went there once. It was unreal, and yeah. I went there another time, and it was. I don't want to say it wasn't good because it was good, but it's not pitchfork level. It's not pitchfork, to say. correct? <laughs> pitchfork's unreal. What's the place called with the uh, with those Langos burgers? Uh, it's 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 uh, it's just off of Baker Street. It's oh, up nice. it's up a hill. It's like the olive something. You know what those Langos are, right? Those Hungarian like bread no. things. No, am I missing out? You're missing out. Oh, I'm going there on Thursday, so I'm going to totally go find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just ask. I think I've been there with Mark and Rory. I think I've been there with them. Do you before. need to eat in that town? Mark and Rory are like you. They're the go-to. Like they yeah. are the food tour guys. Yeah. yeah. And there's more good restaurants per capita than anywhere else in. I think in North America in Nelson. Like it blew me away. I remember the first couple times like going down there to work and whatnot, yeah. and you're going out to eat, and I was just like it. It wrecked where I live for me because right. I'm like. You just can't eat like that. Like, as much no. as I love, I go down there for, like, the people are amazing. I love it down there. Yeah. But the food. Like, oh, I will unreal. stay an extra day. It, for the it's food. unreal. <laughs> like, and if you have, if anybody, I, I think Nelson's a pretty good, like, a good kept, well kept secret I, English, man. I, yeah, I, I, you know what I think so. And I tell, like, a lot of people that I hang out with, like, in Salmonar or, you know, kind of up in that part of, uh, out of BC, I guess. Yeah. And, they like they haven't taken the time to drive down there because it's a bit of a stretch. Like you got to do the ferry and it's very twisty. Okay, so you got to take that little ferry over. I take the little one, yeah. Needles sometimes. I just bought a motorcycle, so I'm like, I can't wait for the needles ferry. Like I'm, yeah. the road there. Is okay, amazing. so the needles ferry is the one I took. So uh, when yeah. I came up uh, the last time I was up, I did an actual full tour when okay. I was filming my show, yeah. the full craft cannabis show, and we went up and took that little tiny little needle. It's yeah, the needles it's ferry. The needles right? ferry yeah. yeah, for sure. And what's that? Uh, what's that place? Uh, Oh, just just before or just after? Uh, You're thinking like Mikas, maybe? Yeah, there's a really cool little diner there. Um, Is no. it like the old hotel? Yeah. Uh, oh, it's coming at the end of the day on the Monday. And yeah, I should I know. know it's my business partner is going to absolutely crucify me for this because I should not forget the name of this this bar. Um, it'll come to me. Oh. This makes me sad. I can't remember. But there's uh, a great little bar like right across yeah. the at the at the ferry. It's like yeah. kind of close to the water. I think it's like an old hotel or something. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah, you it's just, really cool. It's a it's a sick drive to make, right? Oh, like, it's, a, like, it's amazing. It's yeah. beautiful. Like if you get car sick really easily, I do not suggest Nelson. Yeah. Um, my oh, I felt so bad. We had a, a girl who was working with us for a while, and we were driving down there, and this was like right before COVID hit. Um, there was a bunch of kind of actually some of the people that were a part of BC Craft, so like Anna, Steph, uh, like Ostrander, yeah. uh, all those kind of that group. Yeah. They put together this great um, kind of like a one day conference about building out your facilities, you know, looking at things like uh, your documentation, paperwork, uh, testing, all that kind of stuff. So we head down there and I feel so bad. We're like just getting into the really windy stuff and we had taken the ferry that's like, you go from Revelstoke and then you jump across and then you head down in the cusp. Okay. And you know, I'm my business partner Chad, he's in the front seat, I'm in the, the passenger seat, we're talking away, and all of a sudden I like look back because Tiff's been really quiet for a minute. Uh -oh. And she is so green. Like she's I'm like, You okay? She's like, uh, yep, yeah, I'm I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be okay. And I'm like, Total You super. look like you're gonna vomit. And like uh -oh. we're driving my truck, so like don't puke in the back yeah, seat. Yeah, whatever you and, do. I think yeah. I've just done that drive so many times. I'm like, I'm I, just, I'm usually sure. the driver. I don't find that. I don't think you get you don't get as car sick if you're driving, right? I'm usually yeah. the driver too. Yeah, I got to change that. I like yeah. driving though.
don't mind. I got a Jeep. It's sick. It's like, I Okay, that is sweet. Yeah. You know what? I had the Jeep before, and I just got the truck, which I love because I can, what like, kind of all my equipment everywhere. Um, I've got a Ram 1500. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. it's great. It's, like, just the right size. I can still yeah. park in the park gates. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, that, that was the thing. Where I didn't jack yeah. the Jeep up. Because I still want to be able to get the park keys. Yeah. I'm not a total pavement princess. I never take the Jeep on here. <laughs> right? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm an admitted pavement princess. We discussed this before. That's so, okay. Yeah. You know, hey, I had the Jeep for, like, uh, I had two Jeeps. So I had them, I think, for, like, four years, maybe. Yeah. I think I went up the mountain twice. Yeah, right? I'm not taking my fucking brand new Jeep on yeah. and, and fuck that. Yeah, you're like, you I'll just take the top off yeah. on my hair, I, you know. I, I, you know what the worst part is? I haven't even taken the top off yet. Oh, you got it. I've had it for, like, yeah. I've had it since, like, 2018, and I haven't. I just, it's, it's a whole That's thing. That's criminal. You got to take know, it off. I know, I know, I know. It's bad enough I don't take, I know, I know, 100%. I take, I promise you I'm taking it off this summer. Okay. And I'll take some pictures on my, on. Yeah, I'm expecting that. Like, yeah. I, I will literally, I will literally <laughs> take the top off this summer. Actually, I'm going to Renfrew on a camping trip on July long weekend. I'll take the top off then. Do it. I'll take the top, I'll take the doors off, I'll take everything off. Okay. I'll take it all quick. off. I have to tell you a really hilarious story. So last, I think it was last summer, had the Jeep, awesome. I'm out with the girls, we're like going to the lake for for the the day or whatever and so we take the whole thing off like the front yeah. back whatever and i didn't put there's like a little kind of canopy one you can put on but i was like man nah, yeah. it's fine won't do it so we're driving back uh from the beach i'm like ooh, it's gonna rain but like tomorrow's also like supposed to be gorgeous yeah. so i shouldn't like put the thing back on it's a lot of work it I is think, a lot of work that's the problem that's why i haven't done it it's a lot of work it's a two-man job it is it absolutely my job yeah i tried yeah. to do it once by myself yeah. it's a terrible no, idea no, it's a Don't two-man job me. 100%. Well, I get this brilliant idea. I'm like, I got bungee cords and a tarp. So I'll just tarp it. It'll be totally fine. So I tarp the whole thing and I go to bed and I wake up in the morning and I have like stupid amounts of water and it's pooling. Like oh, I had the, the no. forest in the river, like it's yeah. pooling in the middle and I had to like bail it out and then I had to go get, I was, had a roommate at the time and I'm like, uh, I need your help because this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, like I'm going to have water all throughout You're my have, like mildew and all that shit. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Right? Oh. So we get out there and we try and get this tarp off the best we can. I end up filling, like I'm talking cup holders are full of water. Thankfully, Jeeps have drains in the bottom, if you didn't know. No, they, I, don't, I don't know that, but I got the feeling that Surprise. there was something like that. <laughs> no, because I, had the, I got the killer system in there, but it's all, you can tell it's all waterproof. Yeah. Right? So, like, I know, that I, I, I got the feeling it was going to be okay, okay if I had a bunch of water in there. Yeah. But I'll find it's, out some cool stuff it, this year. It's a disaster if you do, and I think I drove around, like, sitting on towels for about three days afterwards, and, like, the Jeep never smelled the same. It was just... Oh, uh, yeah, forget it. Yeah, That's so, why I got rid of my previous car. Seriously. Uh, I had a friend, and I... He's like, oh, you're going to, he's telling me, and Ian, if you're watching, you know, like this, this, this story is true. Okay. So he goes, oh, bro, you got to try out this kombucha. It's, it's unbelievable. Oh, this already sounds like a horrible story. Oh, it's a story. horrible story. It's a horrible story. So, you know, I got, I, I was already kind of sort of thinking about maybe getting a new vehicle, but I, but this was the input. So I, I shake this thing up. I didn't know you weren't supposed to shake it. So I oh, shake no. this up and I open it up and kombucha goes everywhere. So if anyone knows what kombucha smells like, it fucking reeks it's like fermented it was disgusting sun. yeah it was disgusting yeah. it was literally end of that vehicle yeah time for the jeep yeah that was it We're burning it, was, it I, to the ground i literally i had that vehicle for 30 more days that was it this is as long <laughs> as we're gonna find the jeep that's like eh, good reason to get the jeep Sick reason to get it. And beer. also, good reason to not shake your kombucha, just so everybody... Yeah, don't shake your kombucha. Don't even bother drinking it, yeah. to be honest with you. Steer clear of kombucha, <laughs> steer, period. Steer clear of kombucha. <laughs> so, what's going on at that prism, you know, like, uh, oh what's, 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 what's good over there? I know a lot of, uh, a lot of our clients at 420 are now starting to get to that kind of stage where might be time to start, you know, hitting me up for some tables. I'm, there, right? that, I'm excited about that. And no, it's uh, honestly, it's been really exciting. Like we started up just over two years ago yeah, and was really like kind of just a pipe dream. Like I came from, so I originally grew up in Manitoba, right? So okay. um, my family's all grain farmers and like I have bled John Deere grain since I was probably before I could walk. So, you know, it was really kind of a, an idea to, to get into the space, but like put out equipment that was super well engineered, super well designed, super robust, and like that just worked for like years and years and years and match the investment that people were putting into, you know, whether it's your micro, your LP, whatever. Right. And no, it's been it's been nuts. Like when we first started, it was really about ethanol extraction and that was where I wanted to go. And, yeah. And then the tables kind of came to the table, which is kind of funny to say, but um, and that, unintended. Yeah, it's unintended. unintended yeah. yeah, but we just rounded that, and it's been really exciting. So 
you know, I think we're on our kind of like third version of the table. We've made some modifications. One of the best parts is like, I'm still on the ground doing a lot of these installs. So yeah, like you're here today doing the installs. And yeah. I did not look like this 45 minutes ago. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Like, like you're one of the founders of this company, right? I'm the founder, yeah. You are the founder yeah. of this company, which is super awesome. Like, Thanks. like I really love to see uh, women in, mm -hmm. in positions of, you know, power and, uh, and authority in this industry, right? <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm, you know, have a large, uh, you know, women presence here at 420. Oh, yeah. uh, um, but no, yeah, no, it's been exciting. And I think, uh, no, absolutely. Like there's not a lot of women out there that have been like the founders have started, you know, their own companies. You're seeing that transition where it's happening more and more. And like when they're coming, coming in and like, I think really just like bringing a new angle to the industry, looking at problems a little bit differently. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of more diversity in, in the space. And like, that to me is super exciting. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, and it, you know, or, hey, as somebody who, and now I don't have like the background in the legacy market as some of my peers do. Like, I've been in it know, for 30 years. Okay, yeah. Like, I'm yeah. not even 30 years old. So, yeah, you know, Christ. it's, it's <laughs> I go to I didn't even know that actually. You know, yeah. I thought you were, I thought you were way older than that. Thank you. I appreciate that. I yeah. get a lot. No, 27. Not because year. you look older, but you just like carry yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's just like it's great hair. It's from stress. Uh, and like well, that's what that's what I'm, that's what being in your in business for yourself is all about, right? Like, yeah, it, like the fact that you're in here, you're you're installing yourself, right? Like, I love that know? though. Like when you when you're in there and you're actually installing and you're having like, I build the relationships with every single person that I install with, and I have had some installs that have gone flawlessly, and it's a fantastic experience. And I have had some where there's been you know, a, a mistake, something's not going right, you know, it, who knows what kind of issue will arise. It's, it's manufacturing, right? Shit does happen, right? Totally. And yeah. I'm so lucky because, um, and we make all the tables like right in Sound Arm. So all of our manufacturing, all of the engineering, everything happens right there in town, which yeah. is awesome. And having them, uh, you know, my partner there in manufacturing is I wouldn't, Prism would not be around if it wasn't for them. Right. Um, but you never know. Like, there, it's it's a new experience every time you go, but having those relationships with all the clients I work with is yeah. the reason that we get to keep making these upgrades and making the product better because they are not shy to give that feedback to me, and you can do great things with that. So oh, I think, you want that feedback. I yeah, think, totally. You know, you learn way more from your failures than you do from your successes. Totally, totally. Put, put yeah, that on I'm, sure. Yeah. <laughs> But you do. I mean, that's just the it's way. Not, that's no, just the way it is, right? Like, yeah. like I want to get that feed, even if it's negative feedback, and it might, you know, it may hurt a little bit, right? Yeah. But if you don't have that negative feedback, how are you gonna how are you gonna grow and improve? Right? Nothing groundbreaking happens when you got a bunch of people around you that kiss your ass. Like right. that's the reality right. of it. Hundred so, percent. No, and and we got guys. One of the things too, and I know we talked about this a little bit before we got started, but. Um, one of the areas that I work in a ton is the Cooties and you have some incredible talent down there oh, and you've got yeah. guys that have done it for so long that they know exactly what they want, exactly what they're looking for. And they share that with you. And you know, it becomes a lot of the modifications I have right now that we've made to the, the tables to make them as good as they are have come from like guys that have been, you know, they tried the first model of it. Yeah. They ran them for, you know, six months a year and they're like, Hey, I would change this, this, and this. And then I get to just drive back to Sound Arm, sit down with my engineer and go, yeah. this sucks. We got to change this. They can do it. At How many that. people are working at your facility in Sound Arm right now? Uh, okay. So it's interesting. Um, a lot of people I think are surprised to hear this, but we run a super lean team. Yeah. So I teamed up with a big manufacturing company when we first started. Um, and they are the reason that like Prism and anything else we've done in cannabis is around. Um, so they have about 150 staff there, 50 engineers approximately, like yeah. they're a big, big operation. They've been around for over 25 years, Right. but on the cannabis side, like prism right now is, uh, I'm, I'm kind of the one who like, I've waved the prism flag, if you will, but we have, I think eight, seven, eight of us right now. Yeah, that's not bad. That's, yeah. good. that's a good tech squad, right? No, ludicrous. I had, we learned so much. It's, uh, I had a client call me, call me today and, uh, you know, God bless her. Right. But, yeah. but she was like, uh, first she started talking medical sales without possession. Fine. That's a low barrier to entry license. Yeah. You know, you're probably all in, all in making money, 30 grand. You're done. You're in. Mm -hmm. That's licensing, health Canada bullshit, mm -hmm. all that stuff. You're in. Right. Yeah. She's like, Oh, well actually I wanted to actually sell the products myself. I'm like, okay, that sounds good. Uh, and I know, I knew where this is going to go yeah. in the end, but I'm like, it's not the end. No, I'm like, I'm like okay, well, you need a, you need a million dollars to put yeah. your building up, uh, to just, this is just for the, just for the infrastructure of the building. Then you've got to choose what kind of, what are you going to do? 
what are you just gonna have a room there and do nothing, or what yeah. are you gonna do, right? And that's when it gets the it gets steeper and steeper. Yeah. Do you know what, uh, did, did you realize? I don't know if you realize this yet, but you may you may want to know this right away. Mm -hmm. If you want to put stuff in the OCS, in, like products into the OCS, yeah. you need to have fifteen million dollar product recall liability insurance. It is. I have to admit, I did know that, and it it's things like that that make my brain hurt at night. <laughs> like you don't need that if you're if you're uh, brewing beer, you don't need that kind no, of liability insurance. But there's some of those regulations that are, you know. We are very unique as uh, as an industry that we are regulated in a way that a lot of our counterparts, if you're looking at like alcohol in that way or tobacco in that way, they don't have to jump through a lot of the hoops that we do, which no. is frustrating, but you know, you just kind of keep going. So yeah, so I, like, I was actually, it's funny because I was talking to a client and I didn't even bring Prism up to him. He brought Prism up to me out in Alberta. That makes me so excited, like hearing that. I, you know, you start anything and nobody really knows you for a long time. And now it's like catching me where people go, oh, you're Caitlin from Prism. Or like, oh, those are your tables. Or we've seen those somewhere. Or it's just like those little things that. Yeah, like I thought oh, to, be, to, be perfectly so cool. on, to be perfectly honest with you, like I didn't realize that you were like the founder of Prism. I, ne I did not know that until literally about two hours ago. I I was doing some research. I went, I went on LinkedIn and I was like, oh, let's add, you know, connect on LinkedIn. Yeah. And I'm like, what the yeah. founder? I'm like, like, uh, like cause I was talking to, do you know uh, Nick Heron from uh, Harvest Miracle? Yes. And Nick, if you're listening right now, I owe you a call back and I'm really sorry. He, I, he is, called me, I think, on Friday, and yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I missed his call. So I was like, I was like, uh, I was like, yeah, I'm meeting with uh, somebody from Prism on uh, today, and he's like, oh, Caitlin. I'm like, yeah, Caitlin, how did you know? Someone called me back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, but you know what? Nick is like Nick is. I met with I met Nick, uh, um, and he, he's overdue. And you're listening. I know you're gonna listen to this, Nick. You're, it's over. <laughs> Overdue to be on this show as well, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I deal with Nick like daily. Yeah, and he's got some cool stuff going on too. Yeah, he's yeah. got he's got a role for a guy that's only been in the industry like maybe fifteen or sixteen months. Yeah, his Rolodex matches anybody's I've ever met. Like you he's ask grinding. him, that's exciting. He grinds yeah. hard. Yeah. He grinds so hard. He's a pleasure to work with because he's such a grinder. Yeah, and he holds me uh, he holds me accountable, right? Mm -hmm. Like he'll be calling. He'll, he'll message me every morning, and I know you know this is true, Nick. Every morning, morning. At like six in the morning, right? He does a quick. I'm hoping to start seeing them at five, Nick, yeah. if you're listening, right? You know, but but uh, but uh, you know, like, and every day we got deal flow going on. I mean, yeah. you ask if you need to know anything about any LP that's going on in Canada, mm -hmm. he knows. I will keep that in mind. You need well, Nick is a but, Nick is like Nick is one of these guys, right? That that he that's could, who you got to be right now, though. Is like Nick, like he, you got it. He was relentless. Okay, so yeah. he was when he first like he called he called me and I have you know I have Mackenzie right so yeah. she's like kind of like my the guardian of my time right yeah. so calls will come into Mackenzie and she'll be like okay yeah well I'll see and and, then, and and at the time he Nick you know this is true okay he was just like an uh, he was Harvest Miracle now now known as Copper Moon he was yeah. just a, like a nutrient salesman yeah and in fairness like I want to build relationships with everybody but it just wasn't a priority for me at that particular time yeah, yeah. but anyways but he kept calling he kept calling kept calling yeah. called finally he got to me and he's like look i'll bring donuts i'm like i'm on keto <laughs> he's like i'll bring coffee yeah. i'll bring whatever just let me just, 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 give, just, just give me a half hour just give me a half hour of your time and and i did and honestly it was the best thing i could have done it's just been an unbelievable uh working relationship with That's him he's awesome. an unreal yeah. guy and uh and yeah so like He's a great guy yeah. to actually connect with because he knows which LPs need tables yeah. and which LPs okay. are failing because they don't have stuff in that, yeah. in that area, right? So just build, and this is the great thing about this industry is that there's so many niches and so many each time for creativity and so much things that we can do together, right? That, like, like I was saying to you before we were on the show, I literally had, uh, in my back, it wasn't, it wasn't in the studio, it was in my backyard at my house yeah. with um, George Ancy, who is... Oh, yeah, from uh, He's a craft Turkey Micro. Micro. Turkey yeah, Micro. Yeah. Right. right, so George is an unbelievable human being. Yeah, like, I like this, George. We met up last time. I was in Victoria and, uh, yeah, had a couple beers. And, yeah, he's a good guy. He's a great guy. Yeah. Unbelievable. Like, really, like, one of my favorite people. But, theoretically... You're competitors. We're competitors, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. But he's in my backyard. I'm pumping up Turkey Micros. Uh, I, you know, he's an uh, unreal guy. There's yeah. plenty of food to go around for everybody, right? I couldn't agree more. And, like, that's one thing that I think is really unique about our space. And maybe it's just, like, the infancy of legalization and whatnot. But, honestly, it's so collaborative. And people are so willing to, like, 
share information and share yeah. contacts and you know hey i got a guy for xyz you right. know, who do you have for for whatever i need like i like that because i think when this first started it seemed very very competitive and everybody was kind of like hunkered down know, and a little scared to share their information and now i, I remember when we first went to exciting. nelson yeah. right and we did that we did a show at the savoy right the yeah. craft supply show yeah and um and uh Groups would send one rep from their crew, mm -hmm. and the whole crew wouldn't because everybody was still super underground. Yeah, right. Like, uh, yeah. Um, have you ever met Carmen from uh, Carmen? He's a genetics guy. He's new to. He's from Salt Spring originally, but he's new to Nelson. He moved to Nelson because he wanted us to be. It a, sounds super familiar. He's, I don't he's, think he's, he's a genetics freak. He's like literally the best geneticist I've ever met. Interesting. Right? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm heading down there. Maybe we'll have to take him for coffee or something. Yeah, you should just just just, yeah. uh, just uh, link up, look him up. I, I'll. You know what? I'll DM you his uh, his. Do it. Yeah, because okay. this guy's unreal, right? You get in like I have to say, and all the respect in the world, like guys that are into the genetics at like that level or that magnitude, yeah. it's a whole different world. Like you can go down a rabbit hole oh, so Jesus. easy, and a rabbit hole that may not even have a rabbit in it. It's True. Right, like but you it's could, exciting. you could be like years and years of work on genetics and, and then not get what you wanted. True. But this yeah. guy, if you look at our first, um, the first episode of our craft cannabis series, we mm -hmm. we uh, we were gonna have Braun Braun Hogan on from BC Craft. Yeah, yeah. You know Braun? Oh yeah. Of course you do, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we were gonna have him on, and he's from Salzman originally yeah. himself. And uh, he like uh, he his mom wasn't well or something. There was some yeah. something that he had. He just couldn't come. He couldn't come that day to the show. Mm. So we're wandering around with Tessa. You met Tessa yeah, from yeah, totally. Red Dragon, right? Yeah. We're wandering around Salzburg with Tessa, like just like smoking ridiculous amounts of joints and stuff. And we ran into her friend Carmen, yeah. who was just sitting in a park. And we ended up getting him on the show. And he ended up being the star of the show and being on another episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like amazing. it was crazy. It was unreal. It's just like, like I, just what I love about this industry. It's just so awesome. And it's such a, wow, oh, I totally say it. Like I'm at this install and it's, you know, you walk in, hey, you're kind of new, I'm new, it's a new relationship. Yeah. And then you get talking for like all of five minutes. Yeah. And we know a gazillion people in the same circle. Like it's right. a small industry and I think it's kind of unique in that way. Like I'm, I'm excited for it. Be, like we looked at doing the microplex before we decided to uh, go the LP route. So yeah. like we have our standard, we just applied for a standard license uh, yeah. for a facility that we built out in Salmon Arm for extraction. And then we have just down the road actually, which is super convenient. Um, a 32,000 square foot facility going up for cultivation. So nice. we're still a little ways down the road there, but we looked at doing the microplex and I love it as a concept because as we all know, it has been, it's been almost like painful for some of these guys that were incredibly talented growers yeah. in the legacy market, like to transition, to come over, to front the bill and money is just not pouring into the space like it was a couple years ago oh. when legalization first hit. And it's unfortunate because I think people have this misconception that you can't make money in the cannabis industry. And it's simply not true. You can, but the talent has to be there. Yeah. And so many of these guys with the talent were, were legacy guys. That like, I think the great thing, you know, even, like in the legacy market, it was about your reputation. Yeah. It was about what you brought to the table. It was about bag appeal. It was like, it, they had, you have so much pride in this industry. Like, you're not talking to people that are growing Walmart weed at massive ludicrous right. scale. You're talking to artists that care so much about what they're doing. And like, it is an art form period. You, to do that. you look at like, um, oh, who's that? What's the guy we were at? We were at his house on up in Nelson, third generation farmer. Really? Oh, that's yeah. Super cool. His dad taught him yeah. and he's teaching his boys and his boys are like Austin, Austin. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think I yeah, know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This unreal yeah, guy. Yeah. This un yeah. like, like this is why these the Austins of the world yeah. need a place. And this is a criminal if it doesn't happen. I agree. If these guys get squeezed out, it's absolutely it's criminal. It's yeah. absolutely cr criminal. I totally agree. And you know what? I it's so exciting for me, especially like when I go down to Nelson or I come out to the Islander, and a lot of the places where it is these guys that were players in the legacy market that really mastered their craft and are now are. You know, and maybe they've they've held back for a year and they didn't jump in and take all you know, 
take all the money from an investor. They, you know, they didn't want to do the whole public play. Like they just, they hung back for a minute. Yeah. And now they're moving into the, a lot of them into the micro space. Yeah, we're seeing, we're seeing things pick up for us. It's been yeah. really busy this last, uh, last month or so. As soon as yeah. like, it seemed like the, the COVID light was at the end of the tunnel, yeah. the phone's been ringing off the yeah. hook. I gotta say COVID's been interesting because I think it like, it almost gave people a minute to like, take a step back. Yeah. You know, take a breath, regroup, get really deliberate with where they wanted to go or almost like when things were really quiet to, to start building. Like I know yeah. for myself and my group, like we really utilized this last year where we weren't distracted by traveling a ton just because we couldn't do it. Like right. we really mastered a lot of our craft. We, we buckled down on those buildings. We buckled down on our team. Um, and now as things are opening up again, like we're ready to rock. And I think a lot of people, especially if you look at the micro space, like they're doing that too. Yeah. And it's exciting. I think we're going to see like 2021 is going to really be, I think a fundamental year where you're going to see the shift from like what was legalization in the beginning and I the agree. rigmarole of yeah. that yeah. to like proper what it should be going for. Turning it back over to the people yeah. it should have been. Uh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Absolutely. So where can our viewers find Prism? Prism? Yeah. Okay, so you can find Prism. Uh, honestly, we're on Instagram a lot. We do a lot on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook, um, prismequipment.com, uh, personal, Caitlin from Prism, very easy. Yeah, look her uh, up on LinkedIn. You'll find out she actually is the founder. <laughs> yeah. I hate China, but I, uh, no, I'm, I'm so lucky. I would not be doing what I'm doing without, like, I have... I think everybody says this. Yeah. I have one of the most incredible teams that uh, I get to work with. I've got a pretty incredible team. Okay. Too, yeah. we, I think we're both really lucky there. That's what Yes, you so need cool. to have that. You have to have yeah. it anyways. Yeah. You ain't doing shit without, a, without an incredible team. Oh, and not yeah. in this industry. Like, there's something so unique about what we're doing now because, like, I can't remember. I haven't put a time. I don't even think I've ever filled out a time card, period, since I got into the space. Like, we, we don't. People don't just stop at 5 o'clock because it's, like, quitting time. They don't just start at eight or nine because it's starting time yeah, people look like look who's here. yeah i know <laughs> and that's what's so exciting is you know you have people that you can pay people a lot of money to work but you cannot pay people to give a shit right and i think we're both really lucky there where we have such great teams of people around us we get to work in those groups where like everybody gives a shit and they really love what they're doing and they're excited and nobody knows what tomorrow is going to put at no, you no. every day is new yeah. like there's no Sam, They're you never have two of the same day as you. <laughs> never. Yeah. No, it's, you know, it's, and that's kind of like the fun of it. And it's not for everybody. That I know for sure. But um, the people that have stepped up to the plate and want to be a part of it and just go like, this is a journey. Could be a crapshoot. Could be awesome. We're going to stick around to find out. Right. Like, I got respect for that. And it's it's fun because it's... Look at all the cool people we get to meet every day. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the like, best people. Like, I, I know I know I've said this before. Like, I don't know what the heck I'd do if I wasn't in weed. Like... I love it so much, and the people are the biggest part of that, for sure. Yeah, yeah. you know it. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on, Caitlin. Yeah, it's been awesome, awesome, me. awesome to have you on, and you have to be, don't be a stranger next time you're back in town. Oh, no, I won't. I hope Perfect. I get out here again. I was, or, like, on the ferry, just felt like I was on the Titanic. Like, oh, my gosh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, you got to get, you gotta get <laughs> out here more often. We'll, well, I'll tell you what, we'll make sure I get you some more business out here, then that'll be it. You'll have to come Okay, not even too, for sure. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Well, for, for 420 Consulting, the podcast, we'll see you next week.